So the first place we start is trying to understand what are the first principles of world, world affairs. Where do we start from? How do you apply this? So we start with the following understanding. And that's number one. The nation state is the most powerful actor in world affairs today. There's not an entity that we have created as human beings which supersedes the power of the country. Okay? And this can be proven. Well, number one, wars happen between countries. People are citizens of countries. Tariffs are placed at the border of countries. Laws are created by countries. And new industries are allowed to emerge or die by the stroke of a legislative pen. So that's our first understanding, starting from a nation-state point of view. Then we have to ask ourselves, what do countries want? What's their MO? What's their modus operandi? And in our estimation, what countries want is power. I think we can all agree to that. But what becomes a bit more difficult afterwards is defining what is power. How do you define power in the state of affairs we have today? And this question has been answered by many academics and practitioners over the years. But I find them insufficient in our understanding of business today. The way in which we define power, the way we define power, is not the ability of one country forcing another country to do what it wants. That's more a result of power. But rather, power is the ability of a country to secure their own interests. I'll say it again. It's the ability of a country to secure their own interests. And that's not a yes or no answer. It's on a continuum. Some countries are more able, and some countries are less able to secure their own interests. And it's this dichotomy, and it's this sort of spread that we measure. And it's this spread that you need to know and to be able to forecast in your works into the future. So, okay, we understand that a country is a primary actor. They want power. That's how you define power. So the next step is answering, what does a country have at their disposal which allows them to secure their own interests? How can they control their own interests, essentially? Just like corporations, you have your ways in which you can, do your, you can secure yours. But countries, I think, have much more vital ways in which they can do theirs and ways in which impact business wholesale across the world. So this is what we have used to define this. Our centers of power model essentially allows you to understand how countries secure their own interests. Now, this is what you need to really pay attention to. If nothing else, this. So what we are saying is that a country has six different ways that they have at each country in the world that they have at their disposal, which they can use to secure their own interests. And they're the following. Number one, they can activate their consumer markets. Number two, strength over their military balance. Number three, and probably most importantly to the ones in this room, their technological leadership in different industries, and how well or how badly they do this. Four, uh, their systemically important commodities, how much they produce and how much they consume, and more so to do that. Five, their geo-strategic positioning, something which is very relevant in terms of Finland's position today, joining NATO recently and knowing the security risks and the benefits around that. And number six, their financial strength. These six different areas is holistically what countries have at their disposal, no matter if you're Botswana, if you're Albania, if you're Finland, or if you're the United States, or if you're China. Naturally, when a country becomes independent, as did South Sudan, they automatically assumed ownership of these six different things by their natures. So the way in which we create this is what's relevant also. So what we do is we combine these uh, six and we create something called the Global Power Index, which essentially uses these six different, what we call centers of power, to create the holistic index called the Global Power Index. And what this also does is that with each of these six, we have also created six indices based off of these, and we've uh, essentially mapped the whole world against it. 194 countries have been ranked. We do this every year 